I observed that civil society um, participation inequality at various UN platforms have been on a good path to close with the opportunities presented us uh, by the digital platforms. And um, indeed, before we move on any further with our program, as I'm again sure many of us in the room are aware, uh, Turkey and Syria were uh, severely hit by a devastating uh, earthquake on February 6th, exactly one month ago. And um, many, many others uh, followed with high magnitudes. The death toll in Turkey unfortunately passed over 45,000, uh, leaving hundreds displaced and injured. So uh, if you could please join me, I would like to call for a moment of silence, uh, keeping all those in our prayers and thoughts, uh, all those who lost their lives or loved ones in this tragic incident. Thank you. Um, as I earlier mentioned, the room is filled with uh, human rights advocates, but foremost I would like to thank uh, Her Excellency Madame Celine Calvez, a member of French Parliament, Permanent Representative of uh, Sri Lanka Ambassador Mohan Pieris, Permanent Representative of uh, Myanmar Ambassador Kiav Mo Tun, De uh, Deputy Permanent Representative of uh, Chile René uh, Rudiegas, and diplomats from Ministry of Women and Gender Equality of Chile, uh, Minister Councillor of Permanent Mission of Guatemala, Ligna Bonilla, and from UNITAR, uh, New York Ambassador Marco Suazo, and of course, distinguished diplomats from Permanent Mission of New Zealand. Thank you so much for your distinguished presence tonight, uh, supporting the uh, JWF Global Engagements during CSW. And uh, thank you. I will shortly invite uh, soon our distinguished speakers to share their uh, greetings with you all and we will go over all the uh, panel discussions that we organize on the occasion of CSW and we'll get to know one another uh, in depth. But before these uh, brief inter interventions, let's play our CSW introduction video. UN Commission on the Status of Women On the occasion of the 67th session of the UN Commission on the Status of Women, the Journalists and Writers Foundation, JWF, is co-organizing 12 parallel events, both in-person and virtual, in partnership with 13 NGOs and educational institutions around the world, including Brazil, Greece, Germany, India, Kyrgyzstan, Romania, the United Kingdom, and the United States of America. As CSW's 67th session is back to hybrid mode, there has been a great interest in participation from our global partners to raise awareness on the status of women's rights and to share civil society best practices for the women's and girls' empowerment across the globe. Prestigious speakers, scholars, experts, journalists, and practitioners will discuss pressing issues and offer innovative policy recommendations on women's rights and gender-sensitive implementation of the Sustainable Development Goals. This year, the JWF is hosting more than 30 speakers from 12 countries. Our themes for the CSW 67 include Protecting Women Human Rights Defenders for Sustainable Peace Violence Against Women Journalists Around the World Innovation – Women's Empowerment Through Innovation and Technology Challenges and Opportunities for Refugee Women in Romania Intersectional Violence Against Women in Turkey Integration Policies for Successful Resettlement of Refugee Women in Greece Women's Role in Nation Building, Empower and Co-Power Global Solidarity to Combat State-Led Violence Against Women The Role of STEM Education in Achieving Gender Equality, Perspective of Youth Challenges and Best Practices of Women Refugees in Forced Migration Stories Gender Responsive Action for Climate Change, Adaption and Mitigation in the Digital Age. Join us in these interactive events to celebrate women human rights defenders, support women journalists as a beacon of press freedom, encourage women in STEM education, and empower women in your life and everywhere.
now I would like to give the platform to Mehmet Kılıç, the president of Journalists and Writers Foundation. Well, thank you so much, dear friends, honorable guests, diplomats from the UN member states. Uh, it's a great pleasure to stand before you. Uh, this is our 10th anniversary, the 10th uh, year that we're organizing the UN Commission on the Status of Women. So I would like to welcome you all again, not only to this reception, but to New York, because we have so many guests uh, coming from eight different countries in New York. So this is uh, the Commission on the Status of Women is one of the most important times at the United Nations, where women leaders, women human rights uh, advocates are coming together to raise voices on violence against women, or gender gap in STEM education, or technology, or many other pressing issues at the United Nations. And also it is important for not only for men, but not only for women, but men to stand in solidarity with women, because this is not only women to talk about, to come together to talk about these issues, but men has to be, uh, uh, be here as well, because we are the other part of the problem, or we are the other part of the solution. So it's important that men and women, we are all standing together in solidarity. This is an important time to support women, women journalists and human rights defenders who put their lives in danger for the rest of us. Think about what happened in Ukraine or many other conflicts. So if it is not for those journalists who risk their lives at the forefront, trying to give us information of what's happening, to learn about what's going on, I think you know, they really deserve an encouragement and let's give a round of applause for the journalists. <laughs> the United Nations is also a place where we encourage women and girls to pursue academic and professional careers in STEM education, science, technology, engineering, and math. Unfortunately, there is a big gap in women in technology, science, and math. So it is a time to make that change. And I want to thank uh, the Triangle Charter School from North Carolina. They came with a group of 15 students and four staff members. Can we give a round of applause to them? Because we believe youth is the future. Youth is key to come up with innovation solutions to global challenges. And you are in high school, and you are very early at this uh, uh, time. And we had not only the Child and Child School, but we have students from Pioneer Academy with us. They had a wonderful, productive meeting today in Pioneer Academy in New Jersey. Uh, I think, you know, let's give a round of applause to Pioneer Academy as well. I would like to give a little brief information about the Journal Writers Foundation. So we are a 501c nonprofit organization registered in New York. Thank you. And we are associated with the United Nations Department of Global Communications. And I, I encourage all and every one of you uh, in the NGO sector to become a part of the United Nations ECOSOC or UN Department of Global Communications because this is how you you know, disseminate information, this is how you engage with the rest of the world, that's how you connect. So that's why, you know, just check on the UN Department of Global Communications, how you can become a part of this, uh, you know, organization. So the JWF, since its inception in 1994, we organize forums for intellectual and social engagement. So not only inviting academics to talk about intellectual, but also bringing civil society to how to you know, put all these academic information, knowledge into society, into action, because if you don't implement all these issues, so those are good knowledge that is not much uh, making difference. So we organize these events in partnership with 36 global partners from 24 different countries. And these NGOs are making a difference in the, at the local level and at the global level as well. Currently, we have uh, 
13 NGOs from eight different countries, from Romania, Greece, my colleague mentioned UK. Please let's give a round of applause to these NGOs who are with us. Thank you. Because with the, with the you know, uh, COVID and Zoom, we became a little bit lazy you know, to organize events online, but I think it's important to come together, right? To you know, meet with one another. I think this is a great opening to, to you know uh, that we are getting together. So the JWF contributes to the UN Global Agenda with a focus on peace building and conflict resolution, women empowerment and girls education, intercultural and interfaith dialogue, the promotion and protection of human rights, the rule of law, democracy, prescribed in the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. Now I would like to just share a couple of events that, uh, that we are organizing uh, since 2014. So one of them is the SDGs conference. Formerly it is known UNJ conference. It's a reflection event where diverse stakeholders that they come to discuss the global agenda, offer innovative solutions and strategies, policy recommendations to advance the culture of uh, peace, human rights, and sustainable development. And then the second event is, of course, the Commission on the Status of Women. So this is uh, one of our important mandate that we are trying to organize these parallel events since 2013 and organize the reception to raise awareness on women empowerment with different themes uh, based on the UN Women's Agenda. The other event we organize is Pioneers in SDGs Awards Ceremony, which aims to acknowledge outstanding organizations and individuals who contribute to sustainable peace and development through innovative projects and initiatives. So this is an amazing uh, you know, project uh, uh, that we are organizing. And we have uh, Dr. Swadesh Raina. Uh, she is one of our jury members. She is you know, like, uh, looking, reading all these uh, you know, projects and giving feedback to the uh, these initiatives and projects have to make it better. And uh, of course, the, the, the other one is World Interfaith Harmony Week. It's another time where we promote interfaith and intercultural understanding among people of different faith, culture, and backgrounds, which is very important that we need uh, for dialogue among different faith and religions to enhance mutual understanding. And then, the last one I would like to share with you is the media and journalism webinars. And this is one of my favorite programs that inspire young journalists as advocates for press freedom. This is a free virtual certificate program that emphasizes experiential and hands-on learning through intensive workshops, webinars, training, field trips, mentorship, and interactive discussions with professional journalists for hands-on field experience. Lastly, I would like to acknowledge these NGOs who are with us today. And I would like to thank our global partners, Association for Dialogue and Universal Values from Romania. Thank you. <clears throat> because they came with a big delegation from Romania. We are so thankful for them, for every one of them for coming. Dialogue Society from UK. Time to Help Relief Organization from UK. Human Rights Solidarity from UK. Triangle Math and Science Academy from North Carolina. PD from Greece. Intercultural Dialogue Institute from Brazil. Raindrop Foundation from Texas. Advocate for Silence Turkey from New Jersey. She's a great women advocate. You should meet uh, Hafsa. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. And Pace University from India. Set Them Free. Jimri is also a co founder of Set Them Free uh, together with uh, Hafsa. And Campus College uh, from Kyrgyzstan. Women Tech Makers from Bishkek, Kyrgyzstan, and UN Women. Again, I would like to thank every one of you for being with us. It is meaningful with your participation. This couldn't be successful uh, without you. I uh, thank you so much for listening to me, and I'll give it back to Jim Brand. Thank you. Of course, you know, 
uh, there is always someone who does all the job, right? So Jinri is our like backbone. You know? yeah, I think she deserves it because I have the pleasure of working with Jinri since 2014, right? Like, I don't like. So I think she's an amazing, an amazing woman, amazing human rights advocate, amazing role model for young people. So I'm so happy to work with you. Thank you. Thank you. So I'm filled with energy to come back. <coughs> Go, girl. Um, as we are halfway through the deadline of 2030, we all know that 17 sustainable development goals are interdependent on one another. And indeed, it's not possible to achieve SDG 5 gender equality um, without gender-sensitive uh, policy actions for the Sustainable Development Goals, the rest of the 16 uh, development goals, as women are subject to intersectional violence on many different grounds. Today, the opening day of CSW also marks 533rd day since all girls living in Afghanistan are banned from schools. Since uh, February 24th, it was the one-year anniversary of the war in Ukraine, where women and girls have been, and they are still, subject to various sexual crimes under this conflict. Last week, we were shaken again by the devastating news of thousands of schoolgirls being poisoned in Iran. Women in most of the Global South countries continue to combat various forms of crimes against humanity. Thus, on the other hand, many, many UN reports indicate that women's meaningful participation in sustainable development, transitional justice, economic empowerment, you name it, media, politics, STEM, they all foster sustainable development and positive peace, most importantly for all. So gender equality is not an issue that should sh fall on the shoulders of women only. We need he for she's in the room more than ever, to support us in this fight. Recently at Davos, the uh, World Economic Forum, UN Women announced that it will take another 286 years to close the global gender gap. And I really don't think that we have that much time and patience to wait that long to live in dignity, to live a life according to our own choices not depending on what is dictated by the misleading cultural, religious, social, and patriarchal norms. This past year, during the various uh, UN speeches of UN uh, General, uh, Secretary General Antonio Guterres, uh, UN Women's Executive Director, and, and many other diplomats have been underlining a common motto, saying that we must push back against the anti-women rights pushback. So I think this is what we aim tonight in this room, creating more cohesive civil society policy suggestions. I truly believe that the 